Well, hey, YouTube. Welcome back, my friends, once again to Jack's Tech Hut. You know, things get sent to me uh, every now and then, and I want to check it out. So this, uh, today's topic, I'm sure it gave it away with the thumbnail and with the uh, with the title. But today what we're looking at here is uh, one of our, my uh, subscribers sent me a link and said, Hey, I like using uh, Fedora Security. And I said, Fedora Security Project? Huh, what is that? Uh, and you know it, it's another distro so and it's created by uh, that great team over uh, I guess at Red Hat right with Fedora or the Fedora team and they decided to put this together and I'm going to give you some highlights of it uh, I did load it it is uh, running as a virtual machine it's running fine and I'll give you the rundown my feelings of Fedora security so I want to just read you off of their website here a little bit about it and you can uh, surely look this up yourself Fedora Security Lab provides a safe testing environment to work on security auditing, forensics, security rescue, and teaching uh, security testing methodologies in universe, universities and other organizations. Now, the SPIN, or this uh, Fedora release, is maintained by a community of security testers and developers. It comes with a clean and fast XFCE desktop environment and a customized menu that provides all the instruments needed to follow a proper test path for security testing or to rescue a broken system. Again, remember, and I stress this, guys and girls out there, when I'm showing you this different stuff for security, this is for uh, learning purposes only. It's for you to learn, and it's for you. You can do a penetration testing if you have approval from the company, okay? Make sure you get approval. Okay, the live image has been crafted to make it possible to install software while running. And if you're running on a USB stick created with a live USB creator, using the overlay feature, you can install and update software and save the test results permanently. That's very cool because, uh, like I said, as you're testing this stuff, you know, we've shown you before and you've seen on YouTube. I know I've seen a couple YouTube videos already of how to create that persistent storage. If you're using Rufus on your thumb drives, you know, get a big enough thumb drive. You're doing it's like a 32 gig should be pretty good for this. And I'm going to go down. I think I have the uh, requirements. Let me see if I got the requirements here. I think I did have it somewhere on here. And no, I'm not seeing the system requirements, but it's not a whole lot. Uh, it seems to run very, very well. But what I'm going to give you now is a couple uh, featured apps here. Um, it, it comes with uh, some of these apps and many more, right? Uh, Ether Ape as a graphical network monitor. Um, Eater Cap. Uh, Med USA or Med no, I guess that's Medusa. Medusa is intended uh, to be a speedy, massive, parallel, modular uh, login brute uh, forcer. Uh, it comes with NCAP, uh, Scrap Workbench, Skipfish. I should probably pull this over here so we can see this as we're going along here. I'm sorry. Uh, Skipfish, uh, SQL Ninja, Wireshark, and uh, Yorsinia. Yorsinia? I don't know. And you can learn more. So there's more you can learn about it here. Again, this is their website. What I can do is, uh, apparently it's not working right. I don't know what's going on with it there, but that's okay. But apparently, uh, I can link this in the description of this uh, video here. So let me get rid of this again onto my other monitor here. Get rid of that. All right. So this is the interface. This is how it comes. I didn't change the wallpaper or anything. It comes with this little mouse in the middle. I have no idea what it signifies. It is XFCE uh, is what it says. XFCE. Uh, so if you click on applications, I was pretty shocked because it's like they're making this as a desktop. Um, you know, a, a Linux version you can run as a desktop. But it's missing a lot of stuff. If you go through here, you'll see it. So let's go like the development. They got this uh, greeny, okay? Documentation about XFCE. Graphs, they got this uh, image viewer, but like if you're trying to make a desktop replacement, you know, wouldn't you have, uh, you know, some other graphical editors in there? You know, uh, like uh, maybe GIMP. Huh. Internet, and this is interesting because Wireshark is loaded under internet. And it should probably be moved to what I'm going to show you here in a minute called the security lab, okay, or the security area. So uh, multimedia, there is a uh, 
Pulse Audio Volume Control. There's Office, but there's no Office programs preloaded. So, and again, you can load all this stuff. It's not meant to be when you have a security system or a security software. And you guys know I, I'm a big fan, you know, of Kali Linux. I've been using it for years. And I do know it pretty uh, pretty well about where the tools are and everything in it. So, uh, a lot of this stuff is, I don't know, like a knockoff, I guess. But, um, you know, it's okay because to have uh, Fedora come out with a security brand or security, um, you know, uh, distribution, why not? You know, it's, it's pretty nice that Fedora, that this, these can run on top of Fedora also. But here's your security lab. You have code analysis, forensics. They're broken down really nicely. Intrusion detection. Network statistics, password tools, reconnaissance tools. This is where I really feel that Wireshark should be placed under reconnaissance tools, not under internet. But that's just my opinion. Uh, voice over IP. It's a VoIP. Web application testing. Uh, there's some in there. It shocked me that there wasn't some others that we uh, usually use. Uh, and then it's got wireless like Aircrack NG and stuff you can use there. Uh, DHCPing, uh, DNS tracker, DSTAT. So D, uh, HTOP is just, you know, to view, you know, um, and everything you load up, it's pretty neat because it, there's not running as root. Every application you run, so it didn't even want run H press. I don't know why. Unless this window is not big enough. Sometimes that happens with HTOP. Uh, so HTOP is set to display between updates. There you go. So there's all kind of stuff in there. There you go. So that is what HTOP looks like. Uh, you guys know I'm a fan of BTOP, but HTOP also, I've used it for years and works very good to check your system resources. All right, let's get out of there. Okay. So overall, you know, it is a desktop system. Uh, I wanted to show you one more thing here. So let's clear this. When you install, when you're using Fedora, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with Fedora, you know, usually we do sudo, apt install. Well, here's the thing. Uh, we'll do terminator. If you see here, apt is not found because it, Fedora doesn't use the apt packaging manager. It uses something called yum. All right. So we would do sudo uh, yum install, uh, and we'll say... Uh, B top and we'll just see if we can load it see if it's in its uh, repositories uh, there it is it gives you a really nice look at, on a view here of how it loads and I've always liked the uh, graphics as things are installing with uh, Fedora over top of the APT package manager but yeah, it's just a personal thing uh, it just looks really nice right it's really clean so now you can run B top if you want it should work fine now. And that's I showed you this on one of my other videos. You've seen actually BTOP running. So so again, this was sent to me by a subscriber. Guys and girls out there, if you ever want me to check something out, you know, give you my opinion, my overview of it, by all means send it in. I'll fire it up as a virtual machine and give it a run around here and uh, a once over and see what it, what it does. But um, could you use this to be a successful pen tester? Absolutely, because you can add any other apps that are missing on here. Uh, Metasploit. Is not on here. I have tested that this morning. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, so you can't use the Metasploit, uh, you know, penetration testing tools that we use. But is it overall? It's it's a, you know, it's a decent looking system. It's nice. Would I use it for a daily driver? Again, no. Uh, I would take this probably. Uh, I like their ideas of putting it on a USB stick, right on a flash drive, and especially when you're doing something like checking for root kits and stuff on a computer. You can boot to that flash drive and use that uh, to run all this, all these great tools on a local system, even a Windows system, right, to check the hard drive out. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I don't want this to get too long, obviously. And, uh, you know, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here and subscribe with us. Uh, to all the new subscribers out there, thank you very much. For those of you leaving comments, thank you. It's always great to uh, communicate back with the community. And try to give back to uh, what I love doing the most is is teaching, playing with operating systems, and uh, you know building networks. And also I love uh, doing forensics uh, and more so penetration testing to check uh, systems hardening out and networks. All right, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, remember Steve Jobs always says, stay curious.
Bye for now.